Picture it, Barcelona, Spain, summer of 1992. You're a premier track athlete representing your country in the Olympics. You've worked hard, put in hours of training for your events. You're ready. On the day of your race, you get off to a great start. You perform well, better than expected. You cross the finish line right behind the first place runner and you take the silver. And despite a personal best performance, you're crushed. You ascend the podium to receive your medal and notice how the athlete who got the bronze is smiling from ear to ear. How is that person who came in behind you so happy, you wonder? Well, the answer to that question is comparison. When we assess the situation, we compare what actually happened to what could have been. And while you are focusing on how you almost got the gold, that bronze medalist is focusing on how he almost didn't get a medal. In this episode, we're going to explore how comparison can affect our happiness levels, both positively and negatively. Let's think significantly. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Melissa, and I am joined by my co-host, Pete, who I often compare myself to. Well, hello, Melissa. Hello to all the listeners out there. I know that if you're comparing yourself to me, that uh, that is going in a certain direction, which we will cover later. Uh, it's it's not up. I will guarantee that. Uh, you say that. You say that. You don't know. You don't know me. I, <laughs> I do know you, and I know... <laughs> I know that we, I don't compare favorably most of the time. Oh my goodness. So, we cannot start off like this. Oh my. <laughs> All right. So, uh, your intro wasn't just an anecdote. I know this uh, because I know you, like, as I just said, that was, that was from a study that you read, wasn't it? Yes, it is. It is. It is from a study. I, I went into the vault for that one. That is, that is from 1995 to be exact. Yeah. Back when, uh, I know, right? That is old. <laughs> Back when uh, ski goggles were a popular popular uh, fashion accessory in the hip hop world, yes. So uh, you know that that long ago, right? Uh -uh, yeah, uh -uh. Exactly. Lest you uh, convince yourself it was last year, right? Yeah. Like we like to do. We're like 2000 was just like oh snap, 22 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, 95 feels like it shouldn't be that long ago, but, right? I feel yeah. like my yeah. my kids would say differently for sure. We will do a um, a month, I think, about time warp uh, in the future. But <laughs> yeah, right now, yes, this study, um, in this study, researchers looked at the emotional expressions of athletes at the summer of 92 Olympics, like I said, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. found that bronze medalists seemed happier than the silver medalists both immediately after the event and on the podium. Okay. Uh, and, you know... This immediately talk about time warp. We'll go back a little bit, a little bit less time. But this okay. ma immediately makes me think of uh, Michaela Maroney and the face she became known for. She was getting the silver medal for the vault at the uh, at the 2012 Olympics, right? Yeah. She was she was famously, and I'm using air quotes here, not impressed that she finished second. Mm -hmm. But you know, before we go any further, before we start telling tales about Olympians in comparison, I'd like to. I'd like to take a turn at defining happiness for everyone. I'm I'm happy for you to define your happiness as I sit here with my making my Michaela face because I do that <laughs> face a lot now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm standing in a line, a long line. I find myself with that sort of like, I'm sure people just think I had a stroke or something and don't assume I'm not impressed because I don't, I don't look not impressed. I look like injured. Let's, 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 right. let's hope if they think you've had a stroke, they're going to offer some assistance. One, one would think. Yeah. I think, right. I think with, with the advent of zoom over the last couple of years, I met, there's a lot of people that wear that face a lot of times. Right, exactly. I love when they're like, "Turn your cameras on." And <laughs> everybody's like, oh, "You uh, prefer if I don't because yeah, I yeah. don't have uh, a poker <laughs> face." Yes, I'll be right with you. Uh, yes. Speaking of poker, uh -huh. um, which I don't know how to play, I, I, I'm just I'm just thinking of of whatever that that game is that they say like, "Hit me." So if you want to tell me a definition about happiness, hit me. Whatever that is. <laughs> that's not poker, is it? That's, that's blackjack. No, that's blackjack. Damn it! I don't. You know. were so close. You were so close. You had the right like venue. Right? Atlantic you're, City. You're I'm still like, in Atlantic City. Yeah. Tell me, okay. tell me what so, you got. So what I got comes from Eric Weiner, who's the author of The Geography of Bliss, which, 
we talked about that a few episodes ago when we talked about um, whether or not places make us happy. Um, yeah. he, he said, maybe happiness is not feeling you should be elsewhere, doing something else, being someone else. Oh my goodness. I have not read that before. That is, um, that just gives me the warm feels as the kids no longer say, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't I think the kids it. ever said, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you know, like, like all cylinders are firing, like the stars are aligned. You're, you're, you're where you're supposed to be. Like, like it's that feeling of like, I was born for this, you know, <laughs> born. Oh yeah. my goodness. I love, like, let me take a second to uh, express some gratitude for your <laughs> okay. word choices. Because oh. most of the time you're erudite and uh, sometimes, like now, you're 100% Jersey. So, Jer yeah, yeah, I like to keep it spicy. <laughs> that's yeah. absolutely uh, delightful. Let me tell you. There you go. I like, to, I like the odds to never be in your favor with my word choice. So. <laughs> what do you think is like the Jersey part? Like, baby, I was born to run? Is that yeah, what you're thinking right. about? Yes, yes. Very, yeah, very Springsteen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I see your definition that gives me the warm feels. And uh, it reminds me that I wanted to circle back to the concept of happiness that we were talking about in our last episode. Oh, you mean uh, um, about uh, Aristotle and how he said happiness is the, the summation of our life when all is said and done. Yes. So the more I thought about that throughout the week while like washing dishes or like cleaning baseboards, I was like, man, that is just like a titch too long to decide if I'm happy, don't you think? Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i would rather that i'm thinking of happiness as like sort of like this thing that i'm doing on the daily mm -hmm. and i i just thought i'd throw this out there and see what you think about it okay. i think about happiness is that the way i know that i've achieved happiness or that i'm in that state is that i'm i'm technically i'm comparing it to you know situations when i when i wasn't so happy right or mm -hmm. like, as you're saying, I think we're saying the same thing, you know, we're in the spot where you just realize that it can't get any better. And the reason you think it can't get any better is because you know, it has not been better before. And you're like, ah, I'm at the, I'm at the crux, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There you go. I feel like, I feel like this is just a little bit ironic because- like In an Alanis Morissette sort of way? Not, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it'll be nearly that much fun, but- Okay. <laughs> But I think that that most advice work takes the position that that um, comparison is the thief of joy, oh. and we are essentially saying that comparison has its place in happiness. Like, like our happiness levels can be boosted via comparison. I that that is what I'm saying. It is, and I think it does. The it there are some caveats. It depends on who we're comparing ourselves to and why. And Thank you for the Teddy Roosevelt shout out there, that thief of joy quote you brought up. I want to yeah. give credit yeah. where credit is due. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of my favorite quotes by uh, President Roosevelt and, and, and something that he uh, imparted to me at our dinner party earlier this year. Oh my God. Here I am like, you went to a dinner party with Teddy? How did I not know? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh wait, a fake dinner party. You That's almost right. had me for a second. Just, uh, For those of you who do not know, out in listener land, I am, out of the two of us, I alert Pete to all celebrity deaths <laughs> like, as soon this, as they've hit the newswire. It is, it is my un, job. It is uncanny. And I thought, how did I miss Teddy Roosevelt? And that is because... He's been dead a long time. <laughs> right. He was doing that before I knew to be, uh, to function as this role. Right, yes. Right. Yes. Okay. So that's why it, it's our favorite dinner party. Our first episode. Now, now everyone knows how much I rely on you to keep me appraised of celebrity well-being. Well, now everyone knows how much you are talking with the dead. Uh, <laughs> relying on them to keep you company during yeah, your... Yeah, that's true. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. true. <laughs> oh, so what my you goodness. My, I think. Well, you think that... I do think it is who we compare ourselves to. Yeah, you no, I, I think you couldn't be more right about it depending on who we compare ourselves to. Since... Mm -hmm. Since we started out talking about Olympic medalists, we can we can see this in action on the podium. Yeah, I agree. So the, that's, I mean, that's why I thought it was so apropos here because the scenario with the medalists works so well because you clearly have like defined, let's just call it roles. You have defined statuses for sure. sure. Yeah. Competitors. Right. And, ex and status is exactly the right way to phrase that. When we compare our accomplishments and outcomes to others, Research shows that we have a tendency to choose others that have a substantial change in status. A sub 
we are choosing others that have a substantial change in status. So you're saying that like on the metal stand, silver to bronze is not a substantial change. Correct. Because those are metal winners, but right. silver to gold is a major status difference as evidenced by who winds up on the weedy box. Right. Yes. The, the, the highly elusive and uh, very difficult to attain Wheaties box, which I may, I may note has never uh, featured a silver medalist. So yeah, very much a different status change. Right. Yeah. You're either getting cereal or you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's the same for uh, the bronze medalist looking to the person who finished fourth, who is a non-medalist, mm -hmm. right? So, so the closest available comparison that represents a major status change seems to be where we naturally try to draw comparisons. So if, if and, and here's, a, here's what I'm going to propose to you. If bronze medalists can be happier than silver medalists by engaging in a downward comparison, that, and that's to say that they're comparing themselves to all the other folks who competed and didn't get a medal, mm -hmm. there should be a way that we can apply this principle and this technique to make ourselves happy, right? I mean, you, you'd think so. Sure. Like in, yeah, in principle. Sure. Uh, I, I go, I keep going back to, and I think you're hitting on it. We're, we're talking the same thing here that you have to suss out like why we're comparing ourselves to other, uh, others. And it was interesting. You said, phrase it as like a downward comparison. Mm -hmm. And I thought about, isn't it really, yeah, it is a downward comparison, right? Like I could have been that, but I'm this, I'm like higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. In your scenario, we're thinking, oh my goodness, I was so close not being a medalist. We really are comparing ourselves to the other athletes. I think just the fact that the situation could have been worse, like, oh my gosh, I could walk away with nothing. Right. That, that, right. That's the, that's the status that we're talking, the status difference that we're talking about. Right. And that, that kind of thinking has a name and we actually mentioned it briefly at the very end of our last episode. That's it's counterfactual thinking. Oh yes. That's where we, that's where we broke off last time. I forgot about that. Yep. That's true. Oh, yeah. 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 Counterfactual thinking, where we compare the factual ways things played out with the thought of, if only, right? Mm -hmm. Imagining how the outcome might have been different, if only. Right, right. And that works in both directions, whether you're comparing up or comparing down. Oh. This, this, type of, uh, this type of social comparison can, can motivate or comfort us and contribute to our happiness, or it can be demoralizing and depressing and take away from our happiness. Are you saying, I'm trying to think where your ores are at, uh, mm. it, you, it can motivate? So, so there's like, comfort? so uh -huh. uh, that's like four different and distinct options. Oh, okay. So, so there's a, there's a positive and negative in each direction. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I think I got this now. So, okay. I got you. I almost had to like draw it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In my head. I did. <laughs> yeah. Don't make me explain the diagram. <laughs> and then, and then we're going to have feet have to explain this. <laughs> random diagram <laughs> like okay picture piece of paper now you're right. <laughs> yes, okay. so if we're looking upward and it inspires us to work harder to achieve the next level of success we are probably going to net greater satisfaction with life but if we're looking up and thinking about oh how close we were to something better if we're thinking if only i had done something slightly different that would be me that is demoralizing that generates regret takes away from our happiness do i have it Absolutely. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Especially that regret piece, especially if, if the comparison has to do with a personal choice we made. Oh yeah. Um, like if I had chosen different, that, that really generates a ton of regret in people. Right. Uh, and, and comparing down has the same dynamic. Mm -hmm. If we're comparing down and thinking, I'm glad to not be in that situation, it brings us comfort, which increases our happiness. Mm -hmm. but if we're looking down and thinking I'm just one mistake away from being in that situation, it is going to make us depressed. Oh, wow. Like if you really think you're on the verge of being that other thing that's down from you. Right. Could, right. Yeah. And, and that, and that plays a role. Uh, they actually discovered this with cancer patients mm -hmm. who were visiting with other cancer patients and were actually brought down because you know, the other group was doing worse than they were, and they knew that they weren't very far removed from that status. Oh, that is fascinating. Huh. Wow. I did not know that. So hmm, that has lots of implications, actually. Think mm -hmm. about that. Like the company we keep, I could go on, but mm -hmm. the bottom line is what you're saying is like, what could have been can go either way. 
and the way we frame the situation, right? Mm. Lots of things we talk about goes back to framing, right? Regardless of whether we're looking up or down is going to have an impact on how happy we are or it can. Yes. And, and just very quickly, I want to talk about relative deprivation because that's what drives a lot of this counterfactual thought that we get trapped in. As soon as you said very quickly, I was like, I don't have two hours, Pete. But I'm sorry, I forgot we're on the podcast. Yes. Okay, very quickly. You're yes. Go, make your point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's hear what you got. Okay. So so relative deprivation is the feeling that we have when we see someone else have something that we believe we should, whether that's the Tesla in the parking lot or or a perceived level of respect from our friends. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons that this is such a detriment to our happiness is that it's never ending. There will always be someone that has something that we think we deserve. That makes sense. Like once you're on that hamster wheel, like there's no getting off. It's the proverbial trap of trying to keep up with the Joneses. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. It's like that guy who got like the robe and now he needs slippers and then this bedding. That's right. Patch and- Didero. That's right. Didero. Our yes. old friend Didero. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're always, you get caught into that spin cycle of always looking for the happiness in the next thing. Mm-hmm. If you're always searching for it, well, it's elusive minx, right? It's never going to, you're never going to find it. Right. That's, a, that's absolutely right. So, so in lieu of looking around us to see what we think might make us happy, we should focus on knowing and being ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seems to be something that's a recurring theme. It comes up more often this month than those JFK references. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, that, uh, it's, it certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. It's that focus on self over others, right? Mm-hmm. On internal instead of external to achieve happiness, right? Right. That's exactly it. And, and this may seem obvious to people, mm-hmm. but studies show that people who see the positive in most situations tend to be happier people. Yeah. So one way to do that is to consciously make comparisons, not to others, but to our past self, oh. right? We can look back at a particularly troubling time mm-hmm. and compare it to our current situation. And that w- is a great way to increase our happiness. Mm-hmm. I never thought about it increasing our happiness, but I certainly do that when I'm trying to measure my own like success. I do mm-hmm. this like, daily check-in with myself. Sure. Continuously trying to be better. So I, I like will use like me in days gone by to acknowledge that yes, I'm making incremental progress, mm-hmm. maybe as slow as an inchworm, but progress is progress, right? Let's own that. Right. Yeah. right. And and I mean that may be splitting hairs because I'm betting that being able to see your progress mm-hmm. contributes to your happiness. So it, it may just be that you're focusing on the way station that links to happiness eventually right? You're looking at success, but it's ultimately increasing your happiness as well. Right. Yeah. And and incremental progress is another recurring theme in our discussions. Sure is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they, the gather around kids. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The moral of the story is focus on being the best that you can be and measure your successes incrementally. That's right. That's right. That almost, that sounded like it rhymed. That was it really good. That I was like, almost like stopped myself. Cause I'm yeah. like, that is too rhymey timey. That yeah, was exactly. some, that was some Mary Poppins stuff. You're, you're popping out. Right. That was awesome. My umbrella and just yeah. chim chimney up onto the roof. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would pay to watch that. Um, uh, so yes, but absolutely right. Incremental. And, and the bigger the goal, the more important measuring progress incrementally is. I a hundred percent believe you. Yes. Right. You don't want to like, go too far with realizing you've been rowing in the wrong direction the entire time. I'm- right. Or, or you don't want to measure how far you are in the marathon at the 26th mile. Right. You want, you want to just continually see, Hey, I've made it this far. I've made it this far. I've made it this far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is going to, I know we always like to try to do like handy, handy, smooth transitions, and this is not going to be one of those. Uh-oh. Um, but I have to bring this up now because otherwise she's going to get lost in the sauce. And I, okay. and I, I got to tee this up. Um, so I'm putting on my blinker. I got to jump into the highway here. I'm, I'm going to miss it. And we're going to, I have a point, but I have to tee it up. So okay. here we go. Woman, Penny mm. Lacasso. Sounds very like South Philly. It does. Oh, yeah. She's not. No, I think she's from Australia actually. Oh. So yeah, maybe she is a transplant. I don't know. Perhaps. She's yeah. a big exact job, right? Decides no moss. I'm not doing this anymore, right? Mm-hmm. So she makes a big move to, I think, another part in Australia. She begins to do <laughs> this 18 year personal relationship. Okay. She has going on. She starts a company called Hacking Happy. 
And she has this very lofty goal. This is just an aside of teaching 10 million humans how to find their happiness by 2025, which I'm all about, right? That's mm-hmm. cool. Sure. Yes. Yeah, it's um, awesome. The reason that I'm bringing her up, not only to pitch her, <laughs> actually not to pitch her <laughs> at all, but is that she spent three years exploring what holds us back from living lives that we actually feel fulfilled by. Oh, and, and one could say that being fulfilled is the root of feeling happy. Yeah, I, I think it's an, an ingredient for sure. Yeah. And to your point, she uses the phrase, quote unquote, fulfilled and happy life mm-hmm. quite a bit in, in all of her, like if you go on her website, when you read her blog, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So she discovered, this is so fascinating to me because I keep thinking about this. She discovered that those who allow themselves to fully process what we normally frame as negative emotions along with the more positive ones led happier lives oh wow uh, and i and i think what you're referring to is called uh emo diversity which which is the ability to experience a diverse range of emotions in equal measure emo diversity that's what mm-hmm. you're saying yes, yeah ma'am. I, oh so so is this emo diversity is this where you is it like so here's my thoughts on this is this okay. negative emotion compared to positive emotion is that what is making people like more appreciative of their happy emotions them sitting side by side. So, so that's a thing for sure. Like you can't, um, you can't appreciate the happy without the sad. That's definitely a concept. Uh-huh. Um, but what emo diversity is, is, is it says that, that it actually is the diversity and frequency of emotions that matters and makes us feel more fulfilled, not the, not the kind of emotion. So in fact, we could make the argument depending on on which definition of happiness we're using today okay that you could be happier experiencing a greater diversity of negative emotions than a limited range of only positive ones really that is very interesting that is that seems very counterintuitive to me that is like down is up right yeah but it just goes to show you that in this in this world where we are so focused mm-hmm. on the need to feel good Right where most of us try to escape from our negative emotions or suppress them or or find ways to to avoid them altogether, all emotions are equally useful for our mental well being. Wow. Well, as long as they're diverse and plentiful, right? Yes. Yes. You, have, you, like, a right, lot of them. right. You don't want to have this. Right. You don't. Wanna, <laughs> you don't want to get stuck on one emotion and 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 ride that train forever. Right. You want a the the full spectrum of the human experience. Got it. That's interesting. So it can be like what is it, inch deep, mile wide? Like, that's fine as far as emotions go. Yeah, it can be, sure. As far as as far as far somebody feeling happy, sure. Yeah. I'm going to go back to her research, actually. I'm going to see if she even mentions emo diversity because in reading it, I had I had not um, read about emo diversity, but I wonder if it's one and the same. I wonder if they're saying it. Um, mm. It's just, uh, that's very interesting, especially when we're talking in this episode about how comparing ourselves to others can affect our happiness. Yeah. Yeah, so- we are so quick to chalk up that so and so is happy solely based on something arbitrary like their social media. Uh, uh-huh. You know, maybe we should dive a little deeper. Maybe, Pete. Right. <laughs> no. All right. Hold on. You're telling me that someone's social media is not reflective of 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 their three emotions that they are trying okay. to bestow upon us. Yes. All right. I, I mean, that came off as awfully trite. I understand, but. But I'm, I actually do have a legitimate point to make here. Um, Follow us for more tips. And <laughs> right, yeah. All right. right. So instead of looking for people who are happy, maybe we should be trying to emulate people who have a large suite of emotions and aren't afraid to engage the full gamut. Oh, okay. I, uh, I see. I see where you're going with this. I got you. Okay. Got you. I was just driving around behind you in the car like... <laughs> Certainly we'll get there someday. Yeah, I got you. That makes total sense, right? That is, that is, yeah, that is a very interesting concept. Yeah. I wonder if there's some sort of uh, inventory, right? Where we could test what emotions we experience, you know, the the ones we allow to sort of marinate or or flow through us, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I'd be curious just to see the menu of everything that is available out there. Mm-hmm. I, I read just this morning that we have the capacity to experience about 34,000 unique emotions what? Now, how do you properly identify how you're feeling when there are that many options Thirty-four thousand. i i have trouble at baskin robbins that's 31 right? <laughs> 31 flavors that's yeah. not 34 000. 34 000. that is crazy 
oh yeah. my gosh i i do these weird throwbacks in my head and as soon as you said that i was like the world may never know <laughs> like <laughs> Sorry, right? So, referring to uh, yeah, yeah, the classic Tootsie Pop commercial with the owl. Yes. Yeah. Like how? Right. Uh, that's exactly where I borrowed that line from. That's exactly a, right. Yeah. A one, a two, <laughs> yes, a three. Crunch. Right. Yes. Exactly. He's got to do thirty-four thousand licks though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that poor owl. But which is yeah, which at least I mean that's just a smidge more than those bites from the elephant that we were uh, talking no, about. No, 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 no. I know I brought up lemon cream sauce before, but. We are not getting into eating things today. We, I just, I can't, I can't. But, but you know what? Since you, since you brought up our one of our favorite meals that we talk about, yeah. uh, I do want to make a point that's kind of adjacent to that. Okay. Uh, and, and I think it's important to realize that we are hardwired for comparison. Okay, we've we've talked about this before. We're social creatures. We're looking for other people to get our cues from. We're comparing our behavior to their behavior, mm -hmm. and and it happens unconsciously. So we really need to make sure that we keep our inputs in check. And what do you what do you constitute as an input? Well, I like I said, what what jogged my memory on this point particularly was talking about eating, but but I'm talking about in, in instead social media, um, the company that we keep, uh, basically wherever we're spending our time. The shows we watch, the yeah, books we read. Absolutely, absolutely. The magazines, right, everything. Anything that we're ingesting. Yes, perfect. Yes, ingesting. Yes, because food you. really becomes part of your fiber. It literally does. And so it's right. the same thing with all these other inputs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and all I can think about is people's social media because I'm, I, you know, I might not really have any desire whatsoever to travel to Bora Bora. But, you know, one week spent at my KOA camping lodge is probably going to look like that silver medal, like when it's adjacent, right, to the crystal blue waters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Bora Bora, we love the support we get from you guys. Keep it up. <laughs> but then, right, you're, you're, you're at your campground and in all your vacation photos, you're going to have a, an expression similar to Michaela's in all your pictures. Where I'm not pleased, where I'm yeah, not. You're, yeah, you're you're just not impressed, right? You're not. This isn't this isn't tropical waters. I'm not I'm not snorkeling with tropical fish. I'll be like, this water isn't even blue. I'm pumping out of this thing that I got to drink, right? I know, but you know what though? You're gonna look at my vacation photos, and you know what you're gonna think? Man, that Melissa, she has a smorgasbord of emotions that she's not afraid to engage with. Thank <laughs> God I am friends with her. She right now That's is right. channeling thirty one thousand. That's right. <laughs> emotions on her face and in I'm that gonna, photo. yeah and, and i'm going to take the next year to list them all out so that i can be more familiar with all 30 something thousand of them yeah that's crazy you know speaking of diversity and and thanks for again jogging my memory in that nice transition there for us i i think just as this podcast strives for diversity of thought mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we have a diverse group of people in our bubble mm -hmm. because our minds are, as, as we said, subconsciously taking inputs and making micro judgments and comparisons constantly. So that diversity helps us calibrate what it is that we see as right. Right. Yeah. Like it's like sonar, right? We're constantly bouncing ourselves boop, boop, off of other objects, right? Yeah. Yes. So to, to your point, I want to reiterate that we are not saying that you should never compare yourself to others because as we've already said. Sometimes there is value in comparing ourselves to the gold medalists that we look up to. And I, I, I'm going to say it again. Mm. I think it really hinges on why we are making the comparisons, right? Right. There's a ton of advice out there that says that we shouldn't compare ourselves to others, that that comparison is often driven by a perceived deficit in ourselves uh, or low self-esteem or, or, or envy because someone else has what we want. Or that that comparison causes us to then focus on the other person instead mm -hmm. of ourselves. And then right. it does nothing to improve us or lead us to our desired state. And, and there is a place, a positive place for comparing ourselves to others. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, that's the whole reason role models are a thing. Right. That's why they're a thing. That's why they're in. That's why they're the new kale. That's exactly right. right. <laughs> yeah. The new kale. Yeah. <laughs> that is why, uh, yeah, that's why representation is so important because it does help to see others with whom we share certain characteristics with doing something that we'd like to do. We think, oh man, that's an option. What? Yeah, no, abs representation absolutely matters. And, and 
you know, you can see this because we celebrate those groundbreakers that show others like them what is possible. Right. Think about it. We now have our very first woman of color as a vice president. And that yeah. is a, a first in two separate categories in that spot. Right. And that, that, and that means we have countless children out there right now who fit into one of those demographics that now think, or both of those demographics mm -hmm. that now think, if she can do that, I can do that. Right. And I, I don't even think it's limited to children. Like I was like, we can be vice president. I was like, I had no idea. I'm, I'm rethinking like life choice. I'm doing the, what if, Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> if only. You know? right. If only. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And so the, how that ties into happiness, you know, you, you look at someone who's able to achieve such a, such a vital position um, you know, that now you think like that's doable, that's going to increase my happiness because now I have, gosh, I mean, the whole world's a stage now, right? I mean, I just, there's just so much more to grab for now. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're completely right. That, and, and one thing that kind of ties in here that I have in my notes, which is uh, applicable is mm -hmm. awe and how that is integrated into how we see ourselves in regard to other people. And you're saying like, like awe, A-W-E, awe. Yes, yes, I'm not, not like awe. <laughs> no, I just wanted to confirm. <laughs> Perhaps it's only me who can't understand your accent sometimes. <laughs> no, 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 I'm positive that that's not true. I, I am, I am 100% uh, born and raised in Jersey, folks, so I, I apologize for the mumble mouth sometimes. No, all good, awe, so. But awe, yes, awe is, uh -huh. that's the feeling that we get when something is so vast that it kind of stops us in our tracks. So it's like similar to like, wow. Yes. Yes. Like, and, wow. and so much easier to pronounce. Wow. Like that's, I should have gone with wow. <laughs> but, I have something in my notes about wow <laughs> that I'd like to share with you all. I find it to be very applicable now. Yeah. And very uh, nice to hear because mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's clear. Yeah. But research shows that, that we can be awed mm -hmm. by our, or wowed, depending on how we want to say it. Okay. By, our, by our nearest and dearest, right? The people sitting next to us on the couch, the people uh, chatting with us on the other end of the phone, the people gazing back at us over Zoom. Mm -hmm. and, and, and psychologists call this interpersonal awe, mm -hmm. right? Often this interpersonal awe is a response to life's big moments, being at the birth of a, of a baby, um, watching someone take care of a sick loved one, witnessing your child be compassionate towards one of their friends or, or better yet, being compassionate towards someone they don't know. Mm -hmm. And this awe is related to happiness. That's why you're sharing it. Yeah, right. Correct. Yeah. Research shows that awe decreases our stress and anxiety on a, on a physiological level, mm -hmm. uh, which can help our relationships, make us feel more compassionate, less greedy, uh, make us feel more supported by and more likely to help others. And, and all in all, it increases our positive emotions and overall satisfaction in life. So is it like uh, that there are these moments of awe out there and we just have to be like more receptive to them? Like, are they kind of like pennies on the ground? I'm just not noticing them. Like, pennies how, on the ground, how, that's how it. do I become more, well, we've, I was going to say awful, but it's full of awe. <laughs> how do I become right. more full of awe? Right. How do I do this? Right, not awful. I don't want you to be more awful. Right. You're like, I can't take much more, lady. We, we, yeah, like, well. <laughs> that's not true at all. <laughs> You're like, I could barely get through this month. <laughs> well, I don't want any of our yeah. listeners to be awful. I want you to be full of awe. Those are completely full different. of awe. Yeah. yeah. So but how I'm, do we do this? I'm, I'm glad you asked because there actually is is a process to this, according to research. There's a whole process. Yeah, we absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. So, so this uh, process. I want to know about the process. How do I do this? Okay. Well. So what you want to do is you want to start by questioning the assumptions that you have about the people in your life. What does that mean? Like, why am I friends with this dude? Like, what am I? <laughs> well, Sorry. I mean, maybe, but, <laughs> but for example, you might think, you know, you might get into a space where you think your partner is insensitive or, okay. or you think your sibling is selfish. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes that story that we tell ourselves gets in the way of us seeing people at their best. Oh, I get it. I see what you're saying. You're thinking that, um, you're saying that what you think of that person might be the truth, but maybe not the whole truth. Like yes. it's just, it's sort of like you're, you're seeing them through your own little lens that you've sort of colored. 
Right. That is exactly right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our our personal internal narration is going to, like you said, color the way we see their actions, their, their yeah. words, their, just everything. They their do. intentions. Their yeah. everything. Oh, right. A hundred percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to increase our chances of feeling awed by that person, mm -hmm. we need to ask ourselves what could be going on in their life that we don't know about. Mm -hmm. Right. Can we come up with examples of how that person is helping others or doing something positive. Oh, it's like, it's like the idea of like with your kids, like catching someone being good, someone doing good. Yeah. Right. You're looking for those, for those, wow, that was awesome moments. You know, mm -hmm. we just, you know, I just said, you know, showing compassion to a stranger would be, would be something like that. Right. Sure. Uh, and that's something that you wouldn't plan. You would just, it would just happen. Mm -hmm. Right. And when those things happen, we should seek to, to commit these all moments to memory by, you know, writing them down or, or sharing their circumstances around them with others in, in, a, in a story so that it, it lives on because mm -hmm. studies show that awe can be elicited again, simply by remembering an awe experience. That's fascinating. And I think also by writing it down, like you're making an effort to incorporate that into your narrative, right? Like the mm -hmm. active, just, um, you know, the whole operation of writing it, right? Well, you know? I, and I know you and I both believe very strongly that about the the power of writing things, making them like physically present on right. On they now exist. They yeah. you've you've brought them out of the ether into into the universe. And then right. like this is yeah, that's interesting. And I have to think that um, you know, if you're acknowledging those awe or those wow moments like that's <laughs> going to give that other person a boost right they're going to be like well shoot you you know cameo me hello you know and it's going to help your relationship with that other person for sure but you know going to give them a little punch in the arm like oh i was noticed like sure. i'll keep doing good things because yeah it was acknowledged sure and and there's certainly that altruistic aspect but but it's also going to help you Right. We've discussed multiple times on multiple episodes that practicing gratitude has incredible benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I know that. I mean, for sure. We've talked about gratitude. Uh, I don't even want to get into it because you probably know exactly what episodes and exactly what be, minute marker. It would be, it would be far too many to list because I feel like we say it almost every other time that we're together talking. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely one of the uh, undercurrents in, in this uh, podcast, for sure. Mm -hmm. One of the threads that is woven throughout. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you're talking about comparing ourselves to other people. And I can think, too, if you're seeing awe in other folks, and we're talking about our sonar is constantly on, where we're bouncing ourselves off somebody else, if we're comparing it for the right reasons, um, you know, it can it can help us generate our own sort of awe moments so like a, sure like a like a positive feedback loop almost yeah absolutely where we're, where we're constantly pulling in these positive emotions yeah uh uh and and just filling up our bucket so that we can go on and and i mean in an ideal situation everyone's doing the same thing and we're just like spreading the joy right we were talking before about the things that are inputs right if mm -hmm. we input a lot of awe or a lot of wow like if we take notice of it and then right. ingest it Mm -hmm. And and to your point before about practicing gratitude, I mean, we already know that, I mean, there's study upon study that says that people who practice gratitude have higher levels of happiness and psychological well-being than those who do not. Yeah. And as you and I were talking in preparation for this episode, mm -hmm. uh, we discussed something that I would love for you to share because I thought you had a brilliant idea that you came up with around gratitude as it pertains to this discussion specifically about comparisons you're gonna have to do a little bit more than just what what is it like can you help me here like <laughs> I, i'm like what are you talking about what is this so you said okay what we had talked last episode about the three good things and how how writing down three things that went well for you that day can increase your happiness uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. That, 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 that jogs my memory. Okay, yes. Um, I suggested that given what we were reading about the topic, I thought a little more focus on that exercise would go a very long way to increasing gratitude, you know, while keeping us out of some of the negative comparison traps you've highlighted. Is that that's what you're talking about, right? As I said, brilliant. Okay, so I feel like I, I still haven't gotten into the the four listeners are like, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? So, okay. <laughs> So yes, okay, I had to make sure I was on target. So 
We take the concept of the three good things and then we make an effort to capture some things like, I allowed myself to experience an emotion I usually try to avoid, Mm -hmm. right? There's our Mm -hmm. emo diversity. Or um, I, I had a moment where I was awed by someone or even like, I brought in the story that I tell myself about so-and-so in my life. Like, right. I've, I've kind of expanded that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, Just trying to capture those things. Like it helps in writing them down. Yeah. Right. Or, or maybe you write down that we found someone that we see as a role model mm-hmm. or, or we're engaged in a relationship where we're the mentor and someone else sees us as a role model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? The, the options, the, 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 the variety of things that you could write down here are really limitless. Yeah. Agreed. Yes. I love the way this exercise like channels us to have, you know, to spend our thought energy intentionally with a focus on like what we're grateful for and, and why, why we're grateful for it. Right. Yeah. I think that's it. Exactly. And any exercise that gets us to put our, our energy into focusing on the good things in our life is going to up our happiness levels Mm -hmm. and, and exercises like this are just, are just, too easy to use uh, some common vernacular mm-hmm. and and have a lot of bang for the buck and uh, too easy to be like accountable for right and writing them down as we said makes them real and and also i think this is super important we talked about this before when you're trying to turn something into like what you do on the daily like a habit mm-hmm. writing it down is so important because it keeps you accountable it also shows you that incremental progress right Right. And if we're trying to, this is, this is one of those things that, that we're going to want to incorporate into our routine as a habit, because Mm -hmm. those positive feedbacks, the, the, the keeping that we've talked about this before, keeping that those things that we're grateful for on the front burner and, and, you know, your idea, which makes it, like I said, I found this to be so brilliant, which focuses that exercise into not just, um, three things that I'm appreciative of today Mm -hmm. but here are some specific kinds of things that i'm looking for which kind of is a call to action for us to almost make those things happen right and then at the end of the day celebrate hey you know what i intended to make something like this happen today and i did Mm -hmm. like you're it's you're become a heat seeking missile Sure. Yeah. That's, that's the term (laughs) we want to go with. Sure. Wow. Thanks for taking my nice warm and fuzzy and making it clinical and (laughs) militaristic. I didn't realize we were blowing something up, but yes. Hey, it depends on what your objective is. That's what I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Literally and figuratively. Right. It's just, it's just, I feel like it gives us more, more agency and more direction and more control over over like instead of just being a passive observer of what our day was yeah we can now step out the front door in the morning and think here's what i'm going to try to make to manifest in my day and then at the end of the day you sit back and go i was able to do these things i love it and speaking of that by the Mm -hmm. way Mm -hmm. our final episode next week our final episode in the happiness is all about how a lot of these things are there for the asking already. There is some low-lying happiness fruit on the ground that I'm telling you is easy to pick up. And we're going to talk about that next week. That sounds like such a fascinating conversation. Which is my nice way of being like, I'm looking at my watch. I'm going to (laughs) wrap this up, Pete. Yeah. (laughs) It's time to go. Melissa's got things to do. That's right. I got to be a heat-seeking missile. That's right. That's right. You certainly are. All right, so I'll uh, I'll I'll start us off then. How's that? Sounds good. All right, Melissa and I would love to continue this discussion with you all on social media. Do you have someone to compare yourself to? Would you consider that an upward or downward comparison? Do you find yourself often thinking, if only, or measuring yourself against what those around you have? And how are you incorporating gratefulness into your routine? Let us know. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkSigPod. And on Facebook and LinkedIn by searching for Think Significantly. And if you enjoyed our conversation, please invite your curious friends to listen. And as I already said, Pete now will be back next week to wrap up this month's discussion on happiness. Until then, we encourage everyone to think significantly about the world around you. Na, 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 na.